Especially with the new one uh, that you sent to me, and uh, I listened to it, and I was just like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I've heard that contemporary chaos uh, thing that you did like two years ago, and this is again completely different in a way. It's Good. it's like re reading uh, a novel with two different endings, something like that. <laughs> That's how I envision it, you know, because it's like these same tunes and. Mm -hmm. Then, then I, I listened to it first, like like it's you're supposed to kind of like and you know, from tracks, and then I compare tracks one after the other, and that's I think it's even much more fun uh, to do it almost for me at, at least as a musician. I don't know. Or... Yeah, I think so too. I think that's for sure for musicians that it's yeah. It was just like oh, she used this now or what you know. <laughs> and I, I just wanted to ask you first about this title. I know you explained it a little bit, but dreamed twice, twice dr 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 dreamt. What does it mean? I mean, like, uh, how, how did you come up with yeah, the title? So, the, and... so the, the premise of this record is like, you know, for the people who don't know this, um, I basically kept uh, dream diaries for like a long time, for for last decade, really. That's amazing. Yeah. And um, uh, I wanted to, I always wanted to put them into, you know, turn them into something. And I decided to, uh, write the small versions first, the the, the small group versions, mm -hmm. and the, um, then reimagine them for the orchestra, and and so I think like it, it, I I try to not be programmatic about it, you know. So yeah. I'm not because dreams are already so wacky, you know. But I try to sort of like reread those dreams and then sort of meditate into and get myself into this sort of state. And it, it's it's interesting that some of those dreams I was like immediately recognizing as that having been a dream of mine mm -hmm. and other ones just seemed so otherworldly and bizarre and like it, it felt like I was reading it slightly um you know a, a step removed mm -hmm. yeah so so when I then wrote the orchestra versions of the same pieces I read those dreams again and, and tried to get myself back into it again. And it was yet a different, yeah, angle, it, it, yeah. like, you know, uh, created different images in my head and different feelings and different. Yeah. So, so I tried to kind of um, honor that a little bit in, in, um, in the music. But uh, how was your creative process? Like, I mean, uh, basically what you read, your dreams or like the, what you wrote down and then you, you, sat behind the piano or you played something on the sax or how, how was the, the the process of composing yeah so for me quite quite often in this case as well i i um write down a general outline before oh, I write okay yeah the, the, the dots you know yeah because um you know so, so sometimes like especially when you meditate on something or when you like try and get yourself into a sort of slightly different headspace um and you hear music in your head mm -hmm. for me when i then try to put pen to paper it becomes something too concrete so like it's it's easier for me to just write in words very quickly what i want the piece to do mm -hmm. so i think i did that a lot and That's then smart, uh, yeah. and then filled in the you know then did the hard work of like <laughs> creating yeah. Uh, the notes the, the... yeah be because i wanted to ask you this because you know these compositions are so long and mm -hmm. uh, it's it's uh, i spoke i don't know to, to mike formanek about that who, who also you know writes this incredibly long mm -hmm. things and uh, i'm really curious how, how you approach these things like uh these long structures you know because if something is 16 minutes long and to make it interesting mm -hmm. just how you approach the writing of such a tune and uh, it's quite interesting yeah, yeah. I think in this case, like, you know, because I had the small versions already, that helped. It was like a little yeah. bit like a skeleton. And I knew that I wanted to, I, I did not want to do, do like versions of the same piece. I yeah. wanted to like really rip them apart. And so there are certain pieces where 
I'm literally just taking a section and turning it into a whole orchestra. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, you that know? you took like a piano, or something, or a bass line, or like yeah. yeah, things like that. You know, so yeah. that so it's a little bit more disguised and it's not just so exercisey. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's beautiful because it's amazing. Like also these tunes, like the, the first one was uh, dream, dream twice. Yeah, like w w the, the orchestra version. It's like for me more minimal than the the when the one that finishes the record which is like really dark i don't know right, for me it's, it's like very it, dark. it's you know it's like I, I listened to it and i was like wow it's like the last three minutes like this distorted sounds like dreams yeah. like you know and the, the first version is like when i don't know i think you and tom come in with this uh, improvised duo it's just like you know <laughs> clouds disappear and well it's funny how you did it like really different versions of the same stuff well those those two tunes are actually the only ones that are not the same piece so like in um which is also why i called them something else yeah yeah uh, so the so dream twice which is the very first piece yeah. that you just talked about with the improvisations yeah is really a kind of an overture and it, it grabs little bits yeah. of the material that is like played through the whole record and the, the conductor could could like wave them in whenever she felt this was a okay. good point so she was holding up fingers or signs for um which excerpt i think we had 12 excerpts because we have yeah or 10 maybe 10 because of 10, 10 times, yeah. 12, i can't remember and she could choose which ones she felt was appropriate oh, okay. and Interesting. The, the improvisations were just basically interrupted by these orchestral things yeah. and they meant the orchestra interruptions meant for us to switch gear and kind of flip into a different zone. Mold, you know? yeah. So it was, yeah. yeah. And uh, the last piece on on the small side record is, is called Twice Dreamt. Twice Dreamt, yeah. And that is actually material from uh, Snooker Cows, but mm -hmm. just basically uh, played over and over and lower and lower and okay. lower, and lower oh, okay. until you can't really hear the chords yeah. anymore because when you yeah. play them so low you can't you yeah. can recognize the, the the frequencies yeah and Xena is just kind of shredding all over it. <laughs> it's amazing it's it's really it's just like <sighs> it is dark though. yeah it's really I, I love it I mean for me the music I, I don't know I, I also seem to better write dark music and, <laughs> yeah, yeah really times, you know? yeah no I always you know like I always write something in minor or darkish it's like it dissonances it's so easy and then to, to write something happy or it's like oh jesus okay you know i don't know <laughs> this, is, this is definitely year i mean not that i wrote the music this year but but yeah you know but how, how long did you take did it take you to prepare like uh, a project like that like writing yeah. and arranging and well, it, it took a long time. Like it, I mean, I think I started the the small group uh, music was written for a, a, a one of John Zorn's uh, Stone Commissioning series. Oh, really? Um, I didn't, oh, yeah. So I started writing that in February 2019, and the concert was in May. So I had the small okay. group, but but it, it was a trio first with Josh Martini as a guest, the violinist. Yeah. And, I expanded it to include also uh, uh, the accordion, Adam Matlock and Zina yeah. Larkin. Hey, I wanted um, to ask you, how, how did you decide for the band also? I mean... Uh... Yeah, so so that was another thing. I wanted to... Um, uh, I, I, I wanted to have some sort of glue between the two projects. Mm -hmm. So Corey and Sam, who were always supposed to be on the, on the first project, on the small group mm -hmm. uh, versions, um, I invited them to also be part of the other ones. So, so there's some kind of coherence. Yeah. Um, you know, so the three of us are on both. Yeah. And um, the rest, I think I just went for, uh, I mean, accordion. And I love the accordion. And yeah, um, that's amazing. I've, uh, Adam is amazing. You know, he's such a good improviser, but yeah. he's, also, he's a great musician. And I think Josh, I had already asked. Um, Josh is part of Wet Ink which is a new music group here and mm -hmm. so is Sam and um, bo or both also and, uh, Corey and Josh are also part of the Ice Ensemble. Uh -huh, so, okay. so it's kind of all people well, I've yeah. been stalking for the last yeah, well, okay, good. yeah. <laughs> since I moved here. So it made sense. And then Zena, 
Yeah. Zina and I have been uh, have sort of started to play a li maybe over a, a little over a year ago, and she just makes everything better for me. So. Yeah, I know she's, she's amazing. Yeah, I mean, I already listened to her. You know, those projects with Jim Black, like really. Uh -huh. Oh, that's that's awesome! It's just like it's like amazing stuff. But uh, how how did you approach this one differently, like com compared to like contemporary chaos practices, uh, yeah. like well, uh, composition-wise, let's say? I mean, I mean, for me, what was really different is that I had uh, um, was the inclusion of drums and not having classical percussion. Yeah. That made a really big difference for me because and then knowing Tom, you know Tom Rainey, who's a great colorist but but really a jazz drummer yeah and is very a uh, very sophisticated jazz drummer so <laughs> yeah, he's um, amazing, yeah. i didn't want to deprive him of that you know i wanted to make sure i i tend to write like a little bit like in a sort of ellingtonian way like i write for the for the musicians yeah for the musicians, I, I love that yeah sure. i wanted to ask you that yeah 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 so that i'm definitely coming out of that tradition and I know what Tom's strengths are. I mean, he, oh, okay. he has a lot of strengths. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For me, the difference, um, uh, the main difference is that it has more of a jazz element than contemporary chaos practice. Yeah. Because it has really a rhythm section. Robert, Robert, Robert is also amazing. I love Robert. He's also. great. And he's also somebody who can really flip between things, right? He yeah. can, he's a great arco player, but yeah, he's, he's a really, really great jazz player. So, so, um, that to me made a big difference that that um the, the I two was able to do things. sort of a jazz have a jazz uh um part which the other record the contemporary chaos record yeah didn't yeah have that it's much. different yeah it's more like yeah. yeah ah cool okay interesting and i used uh, less uh, in this case i didn't use it's less so musicians also yeah it's less musicians and it's in contemporary chaos practice there was a high there was a um a second conductor Oh, wow. Bynum, I didn't know this. Okay. Basically, conducted, conducting improvisations with hand signs. Mm -hmm. So he made the orchestra improvise. And this, in, on this record, there's less of that. And there that was, was also a huge orchestra, right? The Contemporary Chaos. It was like really many musicians. It I mean, was more, it was like 45. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 25. I, so yeah, that's okay, that's less. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You're reducing. That's yeah, good. <laughs> no. this, is, this is really almost more like a large ensemble. Yeah, yeah. no, but it's no, it, chamber it's orchestra. <laughs> really interesting too. You you know also to, to already for twenty five people to have it in the same room and do this stuff. It's oh. sound wise amazing, probably right. So, and right now it it feels like dangerous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I love that. When, I mean, when we were mixing the record, we were mixing it. Um, in real time, but remotely, like the the mix, the um, Ron Saint Germain, the person who mixed it, mm -hmm. is in um, uh, New Jersey. The producer David Breskin, mm -hmm. he was in California, and I was here oh, wow. in a friend's apartment because our internet was too bad at the time. And we mixed in real time, so it was like ten hours a day, really, uh, oh, wow. with no latent, very very little latency, so we could hear on the same, oh, we had wow. the same headphones, we had the same. Um, uh, so software called yeah. audio movers, wow. and it, just like hearing all these people, and you know, this was in the height when New York was really bad. It was in yeah. May. Oh April. shit! Yeah, during the lockdown. Yeah. And imagining all these people crammed in a room was was a little unsettling, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, no, it's but no, it's it's a cool. Uh, uh, it's a it's a really good project, really. I mean, the, like this last piece. That's, you know, if things turned out differently, I'll just put it like that. That would be a nice piece. I'll, I won't that's go, true. I won't go anywhere else. But like, but, but uh, speaking of uh, Tom Ingrid, I, I just wanted to ask you also. We we said like uh, about this stir crazy series, and mm -hmm. but first I want to go back w w with you and Tom. You you've played so much in duo. Also, you did like three records before. And I think from the beginning already, you, you kind of have this telepathic thing almost going on. And now when I listen to some of these third crazy series, it's even more like, you know, Tom is already for me, he's like one of the best improvising drummers or not only improvising, but, you know, everything he does, it's just like, I, I also talked with him about this, this determination that, you know, he decides to do one thing and then he sticks for it. and you two now kind of seem to do this together and 
I just wanted to ask you, like, how did you guys develop this sound together through the years? How do you see it as a as a saxophone mm -hmm. player? Yeah, I, um, well, there's a lot of trust for sure. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I know, you know, Tom has been in so many of my groups, for example, and yeah. I'm in his groups and we're in other people's groups together. Yeah. So we've definitely know each other's playing pretty well. And I know, for example, that, you know, for me, Tom is like one of the drummers who gets most involved in the compositional aspect, right? Like he, you, you know, he'll like, he won't just like lay yeah. down a form or something. He's really involved in shaping the whole tune. Mm -hmm. from beginning to the end almost like a composer you know? yeah he plays like so, orchestrally yeah almost yeah, he, so. yeah yeah exactly he's super good at orchestrating yeah. orchestrating and um uh making things personal you know so i've always trusted that and i trust that i don't have to do a lot mm -hmm. you know yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. um and i think the fact that we just like have played a lot of composed music some hard music and then yeah. But we can also, we've done tours where we only improvised for like two, three weeks or so, you know, yeah. which, which as a drum saxophone duo, it sort of means like. Oh, just as a duo, don't... you did it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we wow. Done like, I think we really? did three long tours and. Um, oh, really? Oh, wow. Or maybe even four now. And, you know, if you do that as a duo with just drums and saxophone, you have to start digging quite deep. Yeah. In order not to get. Yeah, that's it. quite <laughs> heavy. Yeah, I mean. Shit, or frustrated. That's... Yeah. Yeah. So, so we're quite used to it. And, and during the pandemic, you know, we got back from Europe the last day we could on the last Delta flight. Uh, oh, wow. I was making it back here. And, um, oh yeah, because you played exactly with Tom's band, right? We played, Tom played in my trio. Um, and then I, in, at the Tacos festival. Okay. In, in March, it was like March 13th. Oh no, in January you played, yeah. In, That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, mixed up. No, in, in March was, was basically when we played in Switzerland and we just okay. made it back. And it was so horrible here and so dark, you know, that we, we knew uh, and everything was full, right? As you know, as you well know, as yeah. musicians know, yeah. our work is, ha is still. Yeah, nothing, it's every, everything is yeah it's no, bad, yeah. nothing is happening here like no nothing yeah so, it's the same here yeah yeah so we felt like we just had to do something to stay sane and this has been really kind of a, a nice thing to do you know to just practice together and concentrate on you know we, we take other people's tunes yeah yeah tunes, i saw that yeah it's amazing. um which is a little bit like having them here for a bit you know yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah definitely and, yeah and it it's it's the, it's been a nice thing. It's been it's been nice to stay in touch with friends and yeah. with um, at least like with, that, yeah. Yeah, with audiences yeah. because our audiences are so in, intense, right? The they they love listening to music and they yeah. go to to they go to so much, you know, in in New York, like they're really in, intent and great listeners and. And a, a huge part of their life was, was yeah. taken away. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, for everyone. Yeah, yeah definitely. The, the, I just wanted to ask you, Ingrid, do you remember the, the, the first concert you did with Tom? Or the first time you improvised together? How I was that? I remember both. I remember both. Ah, so, okay. <laughs> so the first time I improvised with him, you know, we're, we're married. So we're, yeah. um, full disclosure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like, this is going to go. <laughs> I'm not no, editing otherwise, anything. So otherwise, what I'm going to say now is going to sound really odd. Not so, sure. So the, <laughs> so the first time we played together was in our bedroom, um, and <laughs> yeah, that would sound. You bad. know what I mean? It yeah, was okay. Tiny. It was okay. In the bedroom at the time, <laughs> and um, which is where the drums are set up. So we just played for like 20 minutes and. Uh, I remember being slightly nervous about it, actually, because, you know, I've been I've been listening to Tom's music, you know, I've seen him with so many of Tim yeah. Burns projects, for yeah. example, in London, you know, and there was a certain sort of like, well, what if we don't get on or if there's no chemistry musically, you know, that can be, that, that, you know, it's a yeah. thing. So, but we really enjoyed it immediately. Awesome. So that was great. And the first concert was... Uh, when he played with my, I had a non-net with two pianos and I wrote a, a piece that was commissioned by um, 
the Cheltenham Jazz Festival in London. In, mm-hmm. I think it was in 2007, and uh-huh. and Tom played drums in it. Ah, okay, so wow. Was quite a, yeah, it was a real like it was a big deal. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. The, like uh, I wanted to ask you also, like since, since you've been playing also, you know, in Tom's groups, mm-hmm. like uh, the Tom finally finally took over the the chair <laughs> chair of the Maybe. band leader. I mean, uh, 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 th- does this change for you, or no? Like, uh, like this band leader sideman, or there is no of that, right? Like, or is he like a band leader in the sense of how is he like a band leader or as like a sideman compared in your oh, eyes? I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, it's different. Yeah, it's very different. It is. If, yeah. I, if I lead a band or if, I, if he leads a band, because you know we're in charge, right? Like, yeah. To a degree, like, um, I mean, both having to the 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 practical things of tour managing and yeah, making sure everybody is, is uh, getting on the train, etc. But also musically, of course, right? Like yeah. If I write something, I I um, have to make sure I'm happy. And the same, you know, he has a, he has strong concepts, like about obligato, for example, the jazz, yeah. uh, the standard group. It's a strong concept. So yeah, yeah, it's like, amazing. Yeah, that one I love them. Yeah, and in the trio with Mary, uh, because it's improvised, it's slightly different. Of course, you, you know, mm-hmm. it, it's never. It doesn't feel like it. It never feels like we're not equal. Uh, as the musicians in yeah, yeah no I know what you mean yeah but even with the trio there's certain like I think there are probably certain decisions we defer to ah oh, really okay know, like, I I would say like when we we, we we hear something and it's also easy to do direct from the drums right because you yeah yeah <laughs> you yeah, can yeah you influence can influence a lot of stuff yeah definitely yeah oh, oh cool. volume, volume wise and energy wise yeah it's a very it's a very um you know, you can direct things a little bit. And I think that's how he does it sometimes. Yeah, yeah no, I wanted to ask you that because, you know, you, you've been inter- interlapping with each other so much and I, I guess it changes the perspective, you know, once uh, uh, who, who kind of says, okay, we'll go there or, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it's not like, you know, it's, it's never nah, like nah, yeah. bossy or anything. It's just, um, yeah, yeah. it's a slight shift in dynamics, I would say. Yeah. Uh, uh, Ingrid, I just want to go a little bit back, like, uh, uh, before even New York, uh, you, you went from Germany to London when you were 19, right? Yeah. And I, I wanted to ask you, how was the London, this improvised jazz scene back there, back then, compared, to, let's say, to New York? And in general, how, how was it like for you when you came from Germany to London, especially that mm-hmm. scene? I mean, I know you played Sleep Thief with L- L- Liam Noble, which was later, I guess. I love the trio, you know, that's such okay. good records. and. Uh, but how how did you get involved first in that scene? Yeah, so I moved just before my 19th birthday, but I didn't play then. So 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 in the beginning, London was like I started playing right at the beginning, mm-hmm. and um, so you know I had to a lot to learn before I could even be part of anything. Right? Yeah, like it sure. Took, like, several years, and um, before I could even say. Um, call myself part of any scene, you know, yeah. and uh, I started off uh, by basking in the subway and like playing uh-huh. in the streets and then gradually playing little restaurants gigs. Yeah. And then I met um, Monica Vasconcelos, a mm-hmm. Brazilian singer, and Ifi Tolentino, a Brazilian guitarist, and we started playing together and form, forming a band and we had, so, so I played, I, was, I got pretty involved in Brazilian music for a while. Yeah, I saw that. I was qu- I was quite surprised. Yeah, with that, I cannot imagine now. I mean, like you know. Yeah, but it's it's. I still go there. Like for for example, if I have a bad day, I will almost always put on a Brazilian record. Oh, really? Oh, wow! That's cool. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, it's be- it's beautiful music. You know? Oh yeah, I, I love it's you know a, I... such a wealth of music out there. Yeah, you know? yeah, it's it's great stuff. And then I gradually moved into jazz and. Um, then met people from the fire collective which was a sort of a young collective that was trying to branch out of the, the sort of the, london was for a while it's to me at least it seemed either very quite mainstream or mm-hmm. completely this free free and, scene yeah 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 and there was seemed very little for younger people to do um like promoters were a little 
hesitant to book something that would be, you, you know, wasn't yeah. fitting those scenes, etc. Yeah. So there was only very few clubs to play. So the, the Fire Collective was really, really important for me because we we did stuff together. We learned from each other. We studied together. You know, it's really, mm -hmm. and it was, uh, you know, people would share resources and even our That's mailing good, yeah. list, everything. So we, we were very organized and and helped each other mm -hmm. and but then in the last few years while, while living there I, I looked more into the sort of um, uh, free improv scene and, yeah. scene and you know I think it's just a natural curiosity that, takes that over started and, yeah and as, as, I think as a musician as, as, um, I, I needed to get a little bit away from here's the form, here's where you play, here's where you don't play. Mm. And just like get a sense of like, well, what if you're really involved in the overall composition? Right? Yeah. If, yeah. Like you, you're involved in the whole hour um, and shaping everything and being completely active the whole time, even even if you're not playing. Yeah. And I think the, the free improvised scene was really helpful for me in that sense. Yeah. I mean, there's some strong characters in England, you know. Yeah, yeah, sure. Th th that scene definitely, yeah. And yeah, everybody's really their own person, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's very. Really but the, and, and, and then you kind of preserve this attitude when going to New York and, I mean, already the anti house, like, you know, that's to have like a DB band in New York. That, that's like, you know, when I check, when I listen to that record to check the names of that and then the music, it's just like, wow, mind blowing. And <laughs> uh, really, uh, and how was it for you when you came to New York? I mean, I guess Tom helped in a way, but uh, like for you music wise and. Yeah, I, I wanted to, to make sure that I'm not gonna be like Tom's girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, so, yeah. so I didn't want to like, abuse the fa or use the fact that I say would be hanging out and Tim Burns house with yeah. Mike Tabor and people like that. I did. I, I, I think some of those people did, barely knew that I was a musician for a while. Uh -huh, Tom okay. didn't know I was a musician. I knew Tom for like a year and a half or two years before we got together and he didn't really know I was a musician. I really, oh, wow. I always sort of kept funny. that. We always talked about different things. Yeah, but that's cool. um, when I when I first got here, the, the, it, it was exciting, but it was also difficult. I was already thirty eight. Mm -hmm. um, I was like trying to start a new life, um, but I wasn't part of the scene, right? So yeah. you know, it's like when as a musician you go to a club, that's also your social life. Yeah. Like okay. I mean, you you must know everybody in Ljubljana, right? No, yeah. are you in New Ljubljana? No, I'm in mean, Maribor. Oh, you're which, Maribor, that's right. Which is like even smaller. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I know Maribor, but, but, um, but you know what it's like, right? Like, yeah, yeah, sure. So for me, it's, it was suddenly I would go to a jazz club and nobody knows me, you know? Yeah. And it, like just that whole thing of like not having friends and not having a social life while Tom was on tour quite a lot. Yeah. Was not, oh, was, yeah, was not easy. So I'd have to be here like for two, three weeks. Uh, yeah by myself but it made me get deeply into comp composing oh okay because i suddenly i didn't have any gigs right like so in england there was rarely the money to fly me back yeah so sure. it would be like i had i had i suddenly had this kind of pretty much the situation we're in right now i didn't have any work yeah um, or very little work and um a lot of time so <laughs> yeah so, <laughs> so i was yeah. practicing and composing and then and I'm not so much that kind of person who goes around giving people their CD the yeah, whole that's, time. That's heavy, yeah. It's... And it was, so, it, but but it also gave me the opportunity to just kind of like look around anonymously and check mm -hmm. out what I actually want to do here, right? So you went to concerts and uh... I went to concerts. I met Chris very early on in Taishan Sorry. Yeah, I, I wanted to ask you about Chris because, and also Paradoxical Frog, I mean, like, the, the, you know, those two records you guys did are, I played with Taishan one tour and we did one album and, you know, he's a genius and yeah. Chris, I haven't right. played with her, but I've been following her music for such a long time and uh, she seems to be like one of your kind of really yeah, long musical partners and so yes. how did you guys meet and form the paradoxical also yeah so so we met chris and i met actually it's, it's always funny to me when we retell that story which we had to do quite often but like um we met in cornelia street cafe 
Oh, wow. I actually remember being in the bathroom and somebody banging on the door and it was her really? <laughs> thinking, oh, that's thinking that the person in the bathroom is a friend of hers. Wow, <laughs> but anyway, wow. she doesn't remember that. But we were both introduced by uh, Tony Malaby and Tom oh, in, okay. in um, Cornelius Food Cafe. Oh. And uh, there was sort of this thing like, hey, you two should play together. And, and Chris, Chris told me like, ah, afterwards you know when once she once she knew yeah. we would get on she said like ah oh, guys always do that they always think, <laughs> like they play together just because the women yeah ex yeah <laughs> that, this sounds now like it yeah like hey, maybe you should hang or yeah but then we but then she asked me to do a session i actually went to see her play somewhere i don't remember maybe at the old douglas street mm -hmm. place um uh and we started talking and she said, do you want to do a session with, with next week with Tai Shawn? So, so we went and just did a oh. session that was back in the day where, where Tai Shawn was still doing that kind of thing. Yeah. And, um, and Chris, you know, I mean, you move on, right? You move yeah. on and away physically. So we had the session and then Tai Shawn suggested to, um, to make this a group that we all write. Oh, really? For, oh, wow. Okay. Which we then did you know and and i think we all we have a, although we're very different composers we have a certain um our compositions coexist quite well yeah definitely with each yeah. other you know that's yeah. not always the case i think when people yeah. several people write for, for groups. no but it yeah it, it's, it's also i mean it helps that i guess you compose on piano and taishon is a piano player and composer and i think it's all these factors that's why this group i think it was really so cohesive while well, you guys still work together, I guess. So, you know. Thanks. Well, we also had a, yeah. a, a like a way we 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 would always allow um, ourselves a lot of freedom with the pieces mm -hmm. on live gigs, especially on live gigs. We would sometimes just abandon halfway through. Ah. Or just play, wow. Yeah. Or just you know sometimes we would play seven pieces in a set. Sometimes we'd improvise the whole set and then just oh, well. play one little fragment you know it was always wildly yeah. wildly different and yeah. i think there was a certain adventurous spirit about it that we all liked yeah i think it, it's it's with all of your music i think you you like that like I, I sometimes when i listen to your albums or tunes like there's always this like thin border between composition and improvisation like mm -hmm. i think something is true composed also on the new record and then you go somewhere or it's uh I think you like this also, right? This idea of melting all this together. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. But uh, if I just return to Anti House, how, how did you uh, then form that band? I mean, how, how was the story behind that? So I saw Mary play at Babes, I think, with Toma Fujiwara's quartet. Oh, yeah. Hookup. I think with Hookup it was. Hookup. Oh, yeah. I love that. Yeah. yeah. And I asked her to do a session and I think ah, that was okay. also just at the tail end of where she was like yeah maybe you know like she was just probably starting to not do that anymore but she but she said yes and so we had a ah, session with Tom with Tom's trio oh ah, really so I I actually started that trio oh ah, okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> we had a session in a, and uh, then played a gig and uh, then Tom decided to hijack the trio ah <laughs> okay so there's always but, a wo but, woman uh, behind it right <laughs> but um i and and john Abel i actually know from from london ah, like he, really? he he played with liam noble squad oh yeah exactly a, a, yeah a project so yeah so i've always liked him i've always loved his playing and his yeah, incredible he's, he's incredible. spirit on the you know as a person and on the bass and yeah so so the, the first version of anti house was actually without chris Oh, okay. Even the first record, she's only on a few tracks. Yeah, yeah. But then, then I loved what she did so much. I started including that, that I included her for everything else. Yeah, no, it's it's a great band. You like all these. You kind of the compositions are like sometimes, you know, there's our own stories like small universes. That's how you hear them. <laughs> I don't know. It's like you know, it's a, such a great blend of musicians also that, you know, it's so cool what you do together. So yeah, and and, and Mary and Chris like. You know the thing with piano and guitar. You yeah, know, guitar yeah, it it's quite heavy. Yeah, well. but they they found a very good solution. Find very good solutions, I think. 
Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, I mean, they're all, all, all you guys are such incredible listeners that it's, I guess, especially guitar and piano, it's in this case, it's quite easy because you, you don't get into each other's way. So yeah, that, that and makes I, write, it... I write pretty linear. So I don't write a lot of like block. Yeah, chords yeah. And, and you play and like you said, you write for the bands, right? So I guess that makes it way easier. I, like uh, I, I spoke the other day to Simon Nabato, the piano player. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, I love his music and he, he did like two amazing new albums and I asked him like, well, but you know, do you usually write for musicians? And he was like, oh, I just write like, you know, I was like, really? <laughs> because it always sounds, you know, so, sounds he captures the idea, but no, he was just, no, I just write. And I but find he it... picks amazing music. Yeah. He picks very amazing personalities, right? Oh, have you heard the latest two quintets? Is it's... That... The one with Herb Robertson and yeah, 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 and the other one with Brandon Seabrook and Tony and Mike Foreman yeah, and yeah. Gerald. That is just like yeah. beyond uh, incredible stuff. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Ingrid, I just want to ask you about some collaborations you did. Like uh, I noticed you, you how, mu how much did Anthony Braxton, you, you played with him and or in his projects, how much did he influence? Like I, I many times hear Braxton's kind of you know, snippets of his music. I mean, I, I guess in every modern jazz or whatever we do or you do, I don't know, <laughs> let's say improvised or something. No, I don't know what it is anymore. Anyway, yeah. But uh, how much, how was he important or is he important and how did you get involved in his projects or with him? Yeah, I think he he's probably the person who most has blown my mind. Yeah. Musically speaking, you know, yeah. of anyone. Like really an incredible um, force. And, yeah. Uh, I don't even think I would have started writing for orchestra without, without, yeah. you know, his encouragement yeah. and his kind of um, because he always said like, people write for large groups, you know, you never turn back. <laughs> ah, well. um, um, I met him in 2008 before I actually really moved here. Was it 2008 oh, or 2009? Okay. Or maybe around the time I moved here. Um, he played three nights at the Irondale Center which is, mm -hmm. was a little like a, 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 used to be a synagogue, I think, um, in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. okay. And he was doing like a, a, a joint concert with um, Walter Thompson, who is, both of them use hand signal languages to conduct orchestras, mm -hmm. you know, a little bit like Butch Morris. But yeah, yeah. So that kind of um, conduction stuff. Um, they're very different with it. And, and they so so they did three nights of concerts with a large ensemble where they both conducted and mm -hmm. Anthony also played a little bit and it just completely blew my mind I mean I had been yeah. involved in this kind of conduction in London a little bit with the London Improvisers Orchestra but this was just a whole other story because there yeah. was also Braxton's written music um there was so many nuclei in that music like like so you would have like a dense conduction going on here and then suddenly a group would disappear and play some oh, clearly yeah. written music so it, it was just an, an unbelievably kaleidoscopic event you know there were yeah to see that yeah and I, I was so smitten by it like I, I think I, I went all three days oh. and on the second day Michael Atias and Steve Delakinski, Steve, um, who passed away sadly, like last year, two years ago now, um, they both introduced me to Anthony. Oh. And Anthony is like has that kind of mind, like he has a, had read an interview with me somewhere in the wire or so or some something. He has that kind of mind. He remembers. Oh. Things. So he said, "Oh yeah, I've heard of you. Um, <laughs> I like that you like Lee Cornett or something like that." He, he remembered something pretty specific that you said well wow. um and I, because i was so you know I, I just told you that i'm not the person to give away cds but yeah. definitely was like yeah i really like to hear your music and i came back the next day with like a pile really of <laughs> wow. which is terrible <laughs> yikes <laughs> the poor guy but i think he but i think he he must have listened to it because he actually called me for a gig in 2011. Oh, okay. And then since then, I've played with him so many different projects, you know, yeah. from opera, quartet, yeah. uh, Sonic Genome, which was like the first one was 80s, second one, 60s. Yeah, I saw the time. Um, 
um, so, so many different settings and so exciting every time, you know, like it's, I, I learn a lot every time. When I... But how, how was he or is he like a band leader? I mean, like... Oh, he's, he's amazing. He's very, very open. Oh, uh -huh, okay. Um, I mean, of course, you know, different projects are different. Different projects require different things. So yeah. for the opera, yeah. for example, that, you know, you have to, if you have like 60 people un underneath you, you have to be more organized and more yeah. clearer about it. Um, in the, in the smaller groups, he was very, very open and very, uh -huh. um, left a lot of freedom. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. But as long as you like, you know, but, but with the emphasis of, um, him wanting to be the music, uh, ha uh, have transparency within the music, you know? Yeah. But, uh, did, did, did you, did, like when you started writing this large ensemble pieces, mm -hmm. did you ever ask him for advice or like, uh, no, no. Okay. I, I mean no, like, I or showed not. it to him or not. Yeah, I, I gave, I sent him, even this CD, I sent him. Oh, okay. Last, wow. last week, yeah. Oh, wow, um, okay. Um, see, so I still give people CDs, but <laughs> <laughs> he's one of the person. <laughs> he's one yeah, of okay. Person. Well, that's but, good. Uh, um, he, um, well, in contemporary chaos practices, I use his sign language yeah, yeah. with some slight modification because Taylor Hobinum, uh, worked with him a lot. A lot, yeah. Definitely. He was the second conductor. He's very used to this language, and it's a the the beauty of um, Anthony's sign language is that it only has twelve signs, um, so you can actually memorize it very easily. Yeah. Okay. And the the descriptions are also deliberately quite open for, so you can interpret them. So meaning it's not a absolutely homogenous sound that you get yeah. out of it, but you get a little like variation. So they're very, and they're very teachable and very, I mean, very easily, um, you can get that very easily to transfer it. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. So it, it made sense to me to use those signs, you know, um, in this last piece, I, I, uh, did not mm -hmm. because yeah. I wanted to get away from it. Yeah. From it. Ah, okay. Yeah. No, it's amazing. Like, you know, he's all, all these, uh, everything he did, the quartets and like the solo stuff, and it's incredible. Yeah, and, uh, yeah his music is really builds. Beyond... Everything builds. On yeah, the, you know, he has a gigantic system of music where everything is part of it. You know, it's yeah. really a universe with planets, and um, uh, there's there's nothing coincidental in it. Yeah, you know I mean, the, yeah. Uh, it's amazing. He's like Henry Treadgill for me, also like you know one of these guys who. I, I just can listen all the time, but uh, I just wanted to ask you one other thing, like uh, how did you uh, establish, uh, you've done a lot of work for Intact also, I noticed you started doing this duo series with Aki Takase and also Chris Davis, and uh, first I wanted to ask you, how did you establish contact with Intact and uh, how did that happen, because you, you have this like nice line going on, going on yeah, on yeah. Intact. How? You I know that Sleep Thief was the, the first record, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm trying to remember how I actually first, oh, I think, you know, that, that two piano nonet that I was telling you about, yeah. the first gig that Tom yeah. did, yeah. we, we were invited to play at the Berlin Jazz Fest that year, and the intact people were there. Oh, okay. Well, and he came cool. and talked to me. I think that's how I, that's how I met them. He came and talked to me afterwards and then oh, I yeah. sent, sent them sleep thief and they took it. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. It's a really nice relationship. Like I love, I love them. Um, it, they, you know, they have a lot of integrity. They yeah. really love music. They work super hard and, um, one of the few labels. It's one of the last few labels, yeah, who are actually like, yeah, that do really... like adventurous music and yeah. not commercial, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yet they they are also not stuck in the past. Like they they do, you know, renew themselves. Yeah. And it's Amazing, really yeah. well run and well like um, I like them a lot. We've become friends all the. Oh, that's good. But, but the, so they actually like for this piano duo series. I mean, p your piano. They actually like t you had this like carte blanche that you can start doing this piano duos. Or how did you decide for? Uh, I mean, like Chris, kind of makes sense that you did a duo in a way, since you have such a long musical relationship. But how did you decide for Aki? Uh, 
Uh -huh. So the, the, the Piano Duo series is actually um, Patrick Landolf's brainchild. And ah, like okay. he, he asked me if I wanted to do it. Okay. Um, I think Irene Schweitzer did something similar with drummers. Oh, yeah, and exactly. It, yeah. And he, okay. he said it's like something, you know, you can do your composed records, you can do, um, but, you know, every once in a while, maybe we, we, we intersperse it with this thing that becomes yeah. a five rec five record series you know oh wow that's together. super and um aki was my decision um because again the berlin jazz fest uh when rich williams was curating it he asked he had a, like a little series that was sort of brooklyn berlin mm -hmm. where he asked several um brooklyn musicians um to pick a musician, uh, to pick Berlin-based musicians, mm -hmm. and then the baton was sort of passed. So I played with Aki, and then the next day she played with Charlotte Graver. Oh yeah, yeah. Graver, I think. Um, yeah, and I played the set with Mary also. But so so they asked me about Berlin-based musicians I would like to play with, and Aki came up because Aki was the first female jazz musician I ever saw play. Oh, really? Yeah. When, wow. when I was like 16 or 17. Or so 16. still in Germany? Or? Still in Germany. Oh, she wow. was playing with um, uh, Maria Joan, the, the great Portuguese singer. They mm -hmm. had a really a fantastic duet. Oh, really? And I didn't I know that. It, yeah. And it was like, to me, it was just so inspiring, you know, to see this like small energetic woman just throw down on the piano you know yeah. so she, she was an obvious choice for me and we just really hit it off we just really i love her company and i love her playing and her her playfulness and yeah stuff. it's it's beautiful yeah it's yeah. a nice one yeah but can, can you reveal like who, who are the next ideas for the piano <laughs> you, you know we haven't actually talked about it yet oh actually okay. we have we have talked about a few possibilities but, okay. but there's nothing settled yet yeah okay, okay. <laughs> no, no worries <laughs> uh, speaking i just wanted to ask you this one last question like uh, since we're talking about this how do you decide for musicians in your projects based on what like uh, what are the criteria i'm not criteria but like, how do you imagine your bands or like uba tuba you know how did you get those guys in or i think it's I need people who are real, who are, have strong individual voices, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that, and in, in most of my, most of my bands, the musicians are able to play hard music while yeah. still being completely themselves and, and having, you know, having some sort of amazing personal personality, music yeah. personality and ideas. Um, I think I need the musicians I'd like you to work with. I tend to be open-minded. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, and, uh, there's a certain like spirit, you know, when I see like somebody play and if I, if I like, I haven't been moved by it and I feel like I need to have this sort of sense, like that person loves playing and is really communicating that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I think that those are the probably the, the the things that attract me to to voices, musical yeah. voices. Yeah. Doctor Jazz.